let's put that last section up there, fam. This is just something to talk about. I know you heard about it really quickly that there was a Baltimore bridge accident. Uh, a um, a vessel that was headed to Sri Lanka with a bunch of Indian sailors, 22 of them to be exact, uh, sent out a mayday as they lost propulsion and then hit one of the bridges. I, I forgot the name of the bridge. Damn, it's in the Baltimore Bay area. The name of the ship is called the Dolly. Like I said, it was by it was with this it was a Maersk ship, M A E R S K, uh, and it literally hit this bridge. Now about six people were lost. The May Day, in fact, a couple minutes before it hit the bridge, was enough to stop a lot of cars from getting on the bridge to clear the bridge from when the bridge was hit. Boom. But now that bridge that that vessel that's anchored and the propulsion is off is sitting still. Uh, it can't move it because they have to clear all the debris out of it. There's a bunch of pieces from the bridge still on it, whatnot. Um, here's a little uh, video from the local news talking about the sailors that are still on the vessel. Now, fam, a lot of people think this is a one and done situation. It was just an accident and they can move on. But there are a lot of people claiming that this particular bridge going down is going to really hurt commerce. So you've heard the stories that it's, you know, an inside job from the United States to control more goods and services from the state taking over the big corporations. Um, it, you've heard arguments that it was attacked by a foreign adversary. Putin did it for crying out loud. Uh, all these accusations are out there. I think it's just a mistake itself, but we're going to, we're going to continue to keep an eye on it right now. The sailors are still aboard the vessel. Let's take a look at this quick, quick video and we'll get into this because there are people who are even analyzing fam on the bridge, kind of saying it was almost like a nine 11 situation where explosives were added and the bridge was uh, blown at a certain time to make it go down. So conspiracies are out there. We'll keep an eye. We'll examine it. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll, we'll follow it as it goes along so we won't miss anything, uh, including the sailors that were on there. Because yeah, I know you're going to hear all these things. This sailor fan was, a, was working for this guy and whatnot. And he was working for Soros and Bezos. You're going to hear all the conspiracies out there. So we'll follow it in real time. Let's get the video up. Do you have the video ready? Jamie, what happened to the video? All right. Do I have to get it up? There you go. Let's get it going. Since the Dolly's journey was cut short, the ship has been stuck right there underneath the wreckage of the key bridge. And so has the 23 man crew. Now, to maintain the integrity of the NTSB's investigation, they can't get off that ship. WMR2 News Elizabeth Boydenton found out today how they're faring so far. Elizabeth. All right, Jamie, I'm going to play it. You obviously have a problem going on with videos, so I am going to just play it. Oh, Got to do everything myself. Here. Dang. I got to this... do everything. Oh, okay, the Francis. I got to do everything. Key bridge. Okay. journey was cut short the ship has been stuck right there underneath the wreckage of the key bridge and so has the 23-man crew now to maintain the integrity of the ntsb's investigation they can't get off that ship wmr2 news elizabeth Boydenton found out today how they're faring so far elizabeth yeah, Kay, Kelly, so we spoke to the executive director of the Apostleship of the Seas today. They're a Catholic ministry and outreach group for seafarers, and he says they're doing about as well as you could expect right now, but they're just stuck on that ship, and they're not sure how long they're going to be stuck on that ship with massive cranes lifting 200 ton pieces of metal and concrete and steel right above them. So the governor Moore said today during his press conference that the part of the ship that's been most impacted by the wreckage is not near where the living quarters or the kitchens are. So they're state they're safe right now. They're just stranded. In the days leading up to their departure from the port of Baltimore, the crew of the ill-fated Dolly did what many crews do before a lengthy voyage. They reached out to the Apostleship of the Sea, a Catholic organization that often helps sailors stock up on things like food and hygiene items. Monday, I was actually the, the driver that took them out. So as soon as I heard about the collision and the incident, my first thought was, I was just with those guys yesterday. He also had a direct line of communication with them. Executive Director Andrew Middleton has been working nonstop this past week to get supplies out to the 23 people stuck on the dolly, sending those supplies out on the salvage team's boats. To remind them that we're here for them and try to find out what their needs are now and then what they possibly could be, you know, in 
in the future as the days go by and they're wow. sitting out in the river. The Dolly crew was expecting to be at sea for about a month, so they do have a lot of food and water. But the seven ships still stranded north of the bridge were at varying points in their journey and therefore have varying needs. But Middleton and his team are able to reach those crews directly and are even planning to bring some of them to land for a day trip. Our idea going forward is to come up with creative ways to provide them with recreational activities that can get them off of the vessel for a few hours and entertain them. I've already uh, have one trip to Washington, D.C. scheduled. Middleton says going forward, the main thing they're going to need is just things to occupy their time and their minds. And if you have anything you're willing to donate, either financially or items, you can do so uh, through the Archdiocese of Baltimore. That is the organization that oversees the Apostleship of the Seas. And we have a link to their information on our website, WMAR2news.com. And Elizabeth, do these crew members have any idea how long they're going to be stuck out there? No. No, we don't know. They don't know. There has been no timeline given to us by the governor, by the secretary of transportation. They just say they're not prepared to say how long this is going to take. But all indications point to this taking at least a matter of weeks, likely longer than the 28 days those crew members were anticipating being on board the ship. Governor Moore did also say during his press conference today that uh, there, when it comes to the variables for moving the dolly out, there are more unknowns than there are knowns. And you can see this massive – look at that, fam. I don't know if you can see that. 22 crew members are still stuck on the ship that collided with Baltimore's Key Bridge. The crew will have to remain on board the ship until they can be freed from the wreckage of the collapsed bridge. You can see that part of the bridge is, like, dug into the actual boat and vessel itself. Uh, and I'm trying – we're trying to find people to, to find out what kind of real impact this will have on commerce, on shipping, on trade, because it was an active port. A lot of things were coming in and out. Like I said, that whole vessel right there, which had 4,700 of those big giant containers aboard that ship that still do. I don't know if any went over. Uh, you can see some are tilted over there. But it was headed towards Sri Lanka. And now nothing can come in and out. So now where do ships go? What about the local workers? How is this going to affect trade and commerce for Baltimore? And not just Baltimore, the United States. I mean, I, I assume... When a big port like this is closed down, you can't just say, oh, the other ships can be rerouted to other areas in a New York, uh, a New York uh, 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 harbor or a North Carolina harbor or wherever the harbors are that are close to Baltimore in between there, taking things in because now it's overloaded. So this is really, really interesting. We're going to pay attention to what's going on. The crew is still stuck aboard there uh, in massive uh, destruction. Uh, any thoughts on what you've seen here, fam, before we get on out of here? Because it's almost a two-hour show today. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, it's just hard to say because, I, again, I've been so focused on the international and foreign stuff. I've only heard, you know, the basic facts of what happened. Um, yeah. I haven't gotten into the conspiracy of, you know, if it was an inside job or if it wasn't an inside job. Um I don't know that that would be really dumb. Yeah. I don't really see how it would be who it benefits. It benefits. It doesn't really benefit anybody at the top. Who really. in? So I, it does seem like an unfortunate accident, but yeah. it does seem like it's perpetuated uh, to be worse because of the lack of infrastructure the U S has. So it just highlights just how bad things are exactly. just like the trains, right? The train derailment. It just highlights. It doesn't have to be a conspiracy or something like, magnanimous like that it's just basically the fact that the united states is a failed state and things are falling apart anyway so when something like an accident like that happens in the u.s uh it destroys it and the same thing you could say for example when there's a, a natural disaster whether it's a hurricane or something else that happens in the u.s it tends to destroy the community it tends to push people against each other when that happens in another country, though, a more collectivist society like uh, Russia, when you saw what happened in Moscow, did the people turn against each other? Not really. Did they accomplish the goal of turning Russians against Tajiks? Not really. Not for the majority of the population. People came together. And that shows you where so the society is uh, in its terms of its development and how united people are. People in Russia are first and foremost Russians. They're not... You know, because there's a lot of ethnicities here, a lot of different ethnicities, but they're all Russian. The United States has a lot of different ethnicities, 
but the 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 people of different groups are fighting each other for a specific reason because they have been put against each other and you see a completely different outlook on that in Russia and I think the US was trying to make that happen um and so it's unfortunate for for Americans right now in the United States anytime something like this happens people turn on to each other and try to figure out you know wh- who done it and I'm not saying we should it but I'm saying at the end of the day it doesn't have to even be that complicated Pam I think that you hit in a really important part there that a lot of people don't they don't tend to talk about is the fact is that you know I they I think they want to use false flag kind of mentality and like inside conspiracy theories to kind of gloss over the fact that no matter what the infrastructure in the United States is weakened and is bad. We haven't spent any time. You know, we don't care about the safety of people anymore. Uh, it's just about the do- the bottom line and dollars for, uh, you know, the corporations and the, uh, the, the CEOs and the oligarchs and the ruling class who are running these things. I know a lot of people will, you know, tend to say, oh, it's capitalism. You can call it whatever you want. It's just a complete negligence on the United States part when it comes to our, our commerce, our shipping, our roads, all in all, it's like we're falling apart. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to sit there and try to blame anything else unless there's actual proof of that. This is about America and the industries being negligent to workers, negligent to everything going around us. And we have shit roads here. We have crap infrastructure. We have shit trains like you talked about it. The Chinese can have trains going all over the place. I'm in the one state, fam, Florida over here where we have a, a, a speed rail like I can get from Miami now to orlando in less than three hours and that's kind of cool to do that but there's not other you know places around that have that uh and uh, we should be having that new train rails like the chinese going everywhere getting people around but that's something they don't want they don't want to invest in any infrastructure that's going to benefit the people getting places the oligarchs still have their jets and there's private airports and everything they can get wherever they want to get but what we where we want to get someplace we can't get there shit out of luck for us fam 